The US Department of Defense often lists it as a preferred qualification. In fact, many major cybersecurity teams, they look for it when they are filling roles. And yet, the average college cybersecurity program doesn't teach 60% of what's on it. I'm talking about the certification that has become a critical benchmark in the $272 billion cybersecurity industry. A certification that is helping separate qualified candidates from the rest. In November of 2023, Comtia completely overhauled the Security Plus exam. And believe me when I say there's a lot you probably still don't know about that switch. But today, I'm breaking down everything you need to know about the CompTIA Security Plus certification as a beginner. And in the next few minutes, I'll be going over what makes the SY0701 different from any previous version. The five topics that consistently trip up even experienced IT professionals and I will show you exactly how to position this certification to land jobs that others can't even touch by the time we are done if this video gives you some value please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can come back for more like this now first let me introduce myself i'm told up michael founder and ceo excel my cyber where we help people learn jobs in 90 days even without it degree or experience now First, let's understand what Security Plus actually represents in today's cybersecurity landscape. The CompTIA Security Plus isn't just another IT certification. It's the single most requested certification in entry-level cybersecurity job postings. And this appears in 24% of all the US cybersecurity job listings. Now, what most people miss is that it's one of only a handful of certifications that is approved by the Department of Defense for IAT level 2 positions. And this makes it mandatory for thousands of government and contractor roles that candidates without it can't even apply for. So the current version, SY0701, launched in November 2023, completely shifted focus from the traditional infrastructure to the realities of cloud first, okay, zero trust environment. While most of the materials are still catching up to these changes, the exam has already moved forward. CompTIA revised 20% of the objectives to align with automation, cloud security, and zero trust principles. And these are precisely the skills employers are struggling to find in 2025. So what exactly are you up against with this exam? I want us to break it down. First, the basics. You are looking at a $404 investment for the exam itself. That's the 2025 price tag. And yes, I will show you how to get that discounted in a bit, okay? Now, the format is straightforward. You'll face up to 90 questions and you've got exactly 90 minutes to complete them. 90 minutes. That's one minute per question. And if you're doing the math, that's one minute per question, right? Now, to pass, you need a 750 out of 900, not 749, 750 about 83% correct to walk away certified. Now, here's where it gets interesting. You will encounter two types of questions, standard multiple choice and what comes to our course performance-based questions or PBQS. Now think of these PBQS as mini simulations where you will configure firewalls, analyze network traffic or respond to incident. They are worth more points and they are designed to test whether you can actually do the job and not just memorize concepts. You understand the exam content breaks down into five domains and this distribution tells you exactly where to focus your energy security operations takes the biggest slice at 28 percent 28 yes and this is all about monitoring detection threats and responding to incident and then the day-to-day -day work of a security professional threats attacks and vulnerability come second at 24 percent you need to know what you are defending against, right? Now, security architecture and security program management each account for 18%. Now, this covers how systems are designed securely and how security programs are managed across organizations. And finally, we have general security concept, and that is at 12%. The foundational principles that everything else builds upon. This distribution isn't random. It perfectly mirrors what employers are looking for in 2025 and some operational skills first threat knowledge second and architectural understanding third do you understand cool now let's talk strategy i've analyzed the exam objectives front and back right and there are five key areas you absolutely need to master okay 
First up is zero trust architecture. And please listen to me. This isn't just some buzzword anymore. It's not. It's the fundamental approach now that is moving throughout the entire exam. The days of trust but verify are long gone. Now it's never trust, always verify. And you need to understand how that transforms everything from network design to access controls. Next is cloud security models. Specifically, you need to know shared responsibility frameworks inside and out. Who is responsible for what? When your data lives in AWS, right? Azure or Google Cloud. You get this wrong and you miss questions across multiple domains. The third is security automation. This is brand new to the SY0701 update and most of the materials barely touch it. Now, understanding how to automate security processes is no longer optional. It's expected knowledge, okay? And number four is identity and access management. See, with a heavy emphasis on privileged access controls, this is the cornerstone of modern security and the exam eats it very hard. And finally, incident response procedures. This is the most common topic for those performance-based questions that I mentioned earlier, okay? You need to know the steps code. You need to know them, not just memorized, but you need to understand them, okay? Now, how long should you study? For most beginners, you're looking at a two to four month journey, investing about say 10 to 15 hours a week. Now, if you wanna break it down, here's how to break down for maximum efficiency. Your first month, weeks one through to four, it's all about knowledge acquisition. You need comprehensive coverage of all exam objectives here. And my go-to recommendation will be Professor Messer's free uh, course on YouTube. It covers every single objective across 177 videos. That's your foundation, okay? You know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the five day cybersecurity job challenge. This isn't just content you'll binge and forget. We're talking hands on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that? and then didn't that is why this challenge is different It's designed to be your support okay we're not just learning you're giving task actionable steps every single day with live q and a's where i personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life watching my videos is great but if you want to go beyond watching if you're ready to take real steps toward a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars career a year come join the challenge the link is in the description below you can't miss it now enjoy the rest of this video but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step for your second month this is weeks five through eight you need a sh you need to shift to practical application this is where most people crash and burn see the sy0701 doesn't just test what you know it tests what you can do try ask me security plus path is perfect for this one for just $10 a month, you can implement security concept in a live environment. Trust me, this makes all the difference on exam day. Now your final month, this is weeks 9 through 12, it's all about retrieval practice. You want to take at least 3 full practice exams. Dion training and exam compass offer the most realistic questions that are found. Now your target here is to consistently score 80 to 85% before you schedule the real thing. Anything less and you need more time. Okay, so now let's talk about the PBQ challenge. Based on extensive exam analysis, these performance-based questions, they are the primary reason for exam failure. The most common PBQ types in the SY0701 include configuring firewalls based on security requirements, analyzing log files to identify attack patterns, implementing access controls in a network diagram, and then selecting appropriate security controls for scenarios. Now, let me show you the tactical approach that consistently works. This does not fail, okay? 
first skip them initially okay see pbq appears first but consume the pro disproportionate time it does now instead move straight to answer all multiple choice questions it will help you build confidence and secure those points all right then once you've knocked out all the multiple choice questions return to those ppqs with your remaining time now you will approach them with less pressure and a clearer head okay and here's something computer doesn't advertise unlike multiple choice questions ppqs award partial credit so even if you can't perfectly configure that firewall you still get point for the part that you get right okay always attempt something rather than leaving it blank that's the key now let's talk about your complete exam day strategy after analyzing hundreds of successful exam attempts i've identified four tactical advantages that consistently boost course tactic number one is what i call the strategic review see the night before your exam don't try to cram everything instead focus on these frequently tested ports Port numbers, especially these five, 22 for SSH, 80 for HTTP, 443 for HTTPS, 3389 for RDP, and 53 for DNS. See, these show up constantly, constantly. Review the major encryption algorithm and their specific use cases. Know when you would use symmetric versus asymmetric encryption. Then refresh yourself on authentication types, password, biometrics, tokens, and their relative strength and weaknesses. And then finally, Review the common indicators of different attack types. What signals a ransomware attack versus a DDoS attack? And then tactic number two is time management. You've got 90 minutes total. So here's how to allocate them. Give yourself 60 minutes for all multiple choice questions. That's about 40 seconds per question. Then reserve 30 minutes for those performance-based questions, which works out to about six to 10 minutes each, okay? And then tactic number three is the process of elimination. See, when you hit a challenging question and you will start by eliminating, and you will, okay? What you want to do is start by eliminating the obviously wrong answers. This one instantly improves your odds from 25 to 33% or even 50% if you can eliminate two options. Even when guessing, you can make educated choices. And tactic number four is flag and return. The testing platform has a flag feature for a reason. Use it liberally, okay? Don't get stuck in a mental loop on difficult questions. Flag it and then move on and then return if time permits. You want to maintain momentum. Maintaining momentum is crucial for your confidence and time management, okay? Now, if you've watched this this far, I bet you definitely have questions about the present day value of this certification in the job market. And that's what I'll be talking about next. Now, According to the latest market data, Security Plus certified professionals are qualified for these entry level roles, SOC analyst roles that pay between 75 to 100,000, security administrator role paying 70 to 95,000, and then junior cyber security analyst role where you can earn between 70 to 90,000 dollars. Here is what makes Security Plus particularly viable or valuable in 2025. It's the perfect foundation for career advancement. See, after one to two years, you can progress to intermediate roles like security engineer paying 100 to 130k by adding specialized certifications like the CompTIA CYSA Plus for defensive security, uh, CompTIA Pen Test that is for offensive security, or cloud security certifications like AWS, Azure, and GCP. Now, with five plus years of experience, advanced roles like security architect or CISO become attainable where you can earn and this is where you earn salaries exceeding one fifty thousand dollars you see while the certification is valuable employers in 2025 are looking for practical application of security concepts this is where building a portfolio becomes your competitive advantage now based on actual hiring patterns for security plus certified professionals these three portfolio projects consistently help candidates stand out first security monitoring lab here, you document setting up a basic SIM using free tools. Second is vulnerability assessment report. It's simple, all right? Just conduct and document a basic vulnerability scan. And then the last one is security policy development. This is basically creating sample security policies based on frameworks. See, the key here 
is documenting this project clearly with implementation steps, screenshot, and then the result. This transforms you from someone with a certification to someone who can apply security concepts. Okay, exactly what employers are seeking. Another important thing I need to talk about before I wrap this up is the most common roadblocks people face when posting security plus. And challenge number one is cost. The $404 exam fee can be substantial, right? And what's the solution? Look for employer reimbursement programs or use the 10 to 15% discount vouchers that are frequently offered by computer training partners, okay? Challenge number two is technical background. Comptia recommend two years of IT experience, but this isn't mandatory. To fix this, just focus on hands-on lab and practical applications to build equivalent skills. And challenge number three is exam anxiety. See, performance-based questions can be intimidating. Now, the solution to this is also simple. Practice with simulation tools and remember that partial credit is awarded. All right? Now, here is the big takeaway from everything I've covered today. It's not about just getting your certification. It's about proving you can use that knowledge in the real world. And we all know that certifications like Security Plus are important. But let's be honest, the job market doesn't care if you have one, unless you can show how it translates to real impactful results. Okay? Whether it's stopping a hacker mid attack or preventing a data breach, that's what employers are looking for. The real question is, can you show up and deliver? Can you build a security monitoring lab, okay? Assess vulnerabilities and then write security policies that actually matter, can you? See, those are the skills that will get you hired, not just a certification on your resume. Now, let's talk about what's next for you. Start building your portfolio and show your work. Implement real security projects, document your results, and then use them as proof of what you can do, not just what you know, and trust me, once you've got a solid portfolio with proven results, you become the person companies want. You're no longer just a certified professional. You're a problem solver, okay? That is it. Now, if this video resonated with you, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell. Every week, I'll be sharing more cybersecurity career strategies to help you break through the noise and build your future. If you have questions, drop them in the comment below. I'll personally respond to help you with specific guidance. Now, I hope I've left you better than I met you today. Until next time, let's make cybersecurity your next big move. Bye for now.